Acts 1 verse 6. So when they met together, they asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, it is not for you to know the times or dates. The Father has set by his own authority. Say to God, he's to, you never worry about times or dates. It is the Father's knowledge. Amen? It's nothing to do with us, the times and the dates. May the Lord find you um, active in his field, doing his will. Hallelujah. He said to them, it is not for you to know the times or dates. The Father has said by his own authority. But you, listen, people want to determine this and the Lord's coming that time and Antichrist is coming that time. It's got nothing to do with us. Then he said, this is nothing to do with you in straight English, but you are concerned about this. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit come upon you. Today, many people keep themselves busy with times and dates, etc., etc. That is not important. What is important for you as a Christian now is that you will receive power when the Holy Spirit come upon you so that you might be His witnesses in Jerusalem and Judea, Samaria, and even to the ends of the earth. Hallelujah. Amen. Say to the too. You shall be his witness in Polakwani, Limpopo, Africa, and to the far corners of the earth. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit come upon you, and then you will be my witnesses. What is a true witness? A true witness is a faithful witness. A faithful witness is one that you can trust, a witness that you can trust. Hallelujah. There's many things concerning that. Now, when the Holy Spirit come upon you, He equip you with power, first of all, to live a godly life. I know what Christians think. They first think about speaking in tongues and so on. It's good. I mean, that is, we need that. Hallelujah. But um, the reason, the outcome of this is for you to live a godly life. And you might be a witness by your lifestyle. Satan is to be a witness by your lifestyle. When the Holy Spirit come upon you, you receive the power to be a faithful, true witness. Hallelujah. So when you receive the power, yes, we speak in tongues and many things, but the reason that we receive this power is that we might be witnesses and our lives might be different than that, that of the world. And I say, oh, he's a witness for Jesus. He lived God's way. Hallelujah. Are you okay? Are you ready for power? Amen. And then they waited in Jerusalem. They were all together praying earnestly, the Bible says. Earnestly. Say to God, is to earnestly. They prayed earnestly. Hallelujah. And then it happened. Amen. Let's read in uh, chapter 2 first. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. I like that. Say to God next to you, your God is a God of signs and wonders. Always. Always. They heard a violent wind from heaven. Wherever Jesus is involved, the Spirit is involved, and wherever the Spirit of God is involved, there is always signs and wonders involved very clear hallelujah even at the crucifixion of jesus he was performing a sign and a wonder said to is to a sign that made people to wonder about who this jesus is i read to the other day when he gave up willingly his spirit with a loud cry the rock split now it doesn't say the rock split only in jerusalem or around the cross the Bible says the rocks split, meaning the rocks around the globe split. There was an earthquake, not only in Jerusalem, around the globe, the whole earth, there was an earthquake. And then the graves of many holy people who died previously were opened. Even in the death of Jesus, wherever Jesus is involved, you need to remember this, write it in your heart, write it in your Bible, wherever Jesus is involved, there is always miraculous signs involved. Always. 
If miraculous signs are not there, he's not involved, I tell you. Hallelujah. Amen. Because he said in Mark 16, those who believe in my name, they will speak with new tongues. They will pick up snakes, and when they pick up snakes, it will not harm them at all. If they drink poison, if they are poisoned, they will not die. Amen. They will lay their hands on the sick, and they will recover. They will cast out demons. Amen. And then the Bible says they went everywhere preaching, and this is one place in the Bible that the, where, where God said, and they went everywhere preaching, and the Holy Spirit was working with them. Say to the guy next to you, if you do God's will, there's a promise. The Holy Spirit will work with you. Hallelujah. When you do God's will, you're obedient to His word, the Holy Spirit will work with you. And then it says the Holy Spirit worked with them and accompanied their preaching, confirmed their preaching with these signs and wonders. Say to the guy next to you, wherever Jesus is involved, signs and wonders is always a witness that Jesus is around. Even in his death, there was an earthquake. Say a great sign. That made people wonder. The rock split. Now let me tell you, it was not only in Jerusalem, it was across the globe. Around the globe, the rocks split. Bah! Today the, sci the scientists study the rocks. And they said, oh, it was this cold and this heat that split the rocks. If you ever look at a split rock again in the bush, remember, Jesus paid the price for you. Give him a hand, please. Jesus paid the price. Amen. Hallelujah. Even in his death. Hallelujah. So here they were waiting. Amen. Okay. The, when the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind. Not a soft wind. A blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them to do. Say to God, as the Spirit enabled them to do. Hallelujah. Whatever we do in the name of Jesus, it is the Spirit that enables us to do. Say to the person next to you, whatever you do in the name of Jesus, it is the Spirit of God that enable us to do what we do in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Different tongues came on them. Now there's many different signs and wonders and tongues and many things that the Lord give us. Hallelujah. So tonight you will see some of those. Amen. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues. Say other tongues. As the Spirit enabled them. Now they were staying in Jerusalem, God-fearing Jews from every nation under the heaven. When they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment. Because each one heard them speaking in his own language. Utterly amazed, they asked, are not all these men who are speaking Galileans? Then how is it that each of us hear them in his own native language? Amazed and perplexed, they ask one another, what does this mean? Some, however, made fun of them and said, Say to God, to, they will always be mockers. You never join mockers. If you do not understand something, ask God for understanding 
but never join mockers. Because when you mock the work of God, you mock the Holy Spirit. This is extremely dangerous. Amen. Never join the circle of mockers. Never ever. If you do not agree with something or you wonder about something, rather keep quiet and ask God to reveal to you, but never join mockers in the name of Jesus. Say to the guy next to you, your God is not a mocker. And then some said, some mockers, some however made fun of them. Say to the guy next to you, it will always be there. People will always make fun of what the Holy Spirit is doing. They will always be, some however made fun of them and said, they have had too much wine. Say to the guy next to you, wherever the Holy Spirit is working, there will be mockers that make fun of the work of the Holy Spirit. Never join any mocker of any kind because your God is not a mocker. Even if you don't understand, don't mock. Don't join the circle of mockers. Never ever. God will give you understanding. Then Peter stood up with the eleven. They all stood up, but Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd, fellow Jews and all of you, who live in Jerusalem. Let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. These men are not drunk as you suppose. It's only nine in the morning. So actually we're saying the bottle stores are not open yet. I mean, it's too early to be drunk. I mean, as you suppose, it is only nine in the morning. No, no this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. And your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days. And they will prophesy. I will show wonders in the heaven above. And signs on the earth below. Say wonders, signs and wonders. I will show wonders in the heaven above. And signs on the earth below say wonders and the heaven above. And signs on the earth below. Say to God next to you, wherever the Holy Spirit is involved, there is signs on the earth below. I mean, and wonders in the heaven above. This is God's word. You cannot change it. Hallelujah. I love signs and wonders because then I know my Jesus is involved.